What screams pretending to be upper class? I work at an exotic car rental branch. I have plenty of customers that rent our cars and ask us to take the ID tags off the key ring understandable. Then I have some that insist they get the same license plate each time and will flip out if I give them the same model as usual but with the plate one digit off. They are trying to make the appearance to whoever that they own the car and get themselves in a trap where they have to keep renting to keep up the illusion. That charade never lasts long. Saw some guys at a stoplight in a convertible 6 series BMW with the top down blasting music and wearing expensive clothes. I can see his dashboard. Every possible warning light was on. Wearing brand clothes that have the huge name of the brand on them. I used to work in one of the brand stores and these were literally made for the lower class that wants to show off. More expensive and higher quality items never had this flexing on them. Rich people on Instagram are probably mostly fake rich buying followers if i were a billionaire i would not want to be tagged partying on a yacht especially not in 2020 the only rich people that like to be tagged on their yachts are stupid kids and celebrities that make a living off being a public figure most mega rich people that can afford a yacht don't want people to find them through social media taking out loans to get your family on a little vacation my friend is doing this. I told him to save up for a trip like that. Apparently stuff around the house is stressing both him and his so so badly with their kids that they are fighting over taking out $20,000 or $30,000 to go on a vacation. One vacation. Then it's back to fighting and whatnot. Absurd. Imagine knowingly going into debt to go on one vacation. They both work too which is even more baffling talking down to working class people. Don't get me wrong there are definitely snooty asshole upper class people however in my interactions with them as a working class person in services they've always been extremely nice. My guess is because we both know who we are in society so there are no pretensions. Fake upper class people have to completely reinforce the class divide. It had to be absolutely clear that they are and always have been above you. Part of me thinks it's resentment at what they might have used to have been, and the other part thinks it's how they think other upper class people behave. This is absolutely true. I used to be a bartender in a very high end hotel. Our clientele was comprised almost entirely of upper echelon business workers, mid high end weddings, and high end banquets. People with serious money don't give a frick. If they have a problem, they aren't scared to tell you about it, and are happy, as long as it gets rectified, promptly. Otherwise they treat you like a human freaking being, and tip well generally. People who think they have money are massive seek bags. These people act like hot shoot, treat service workers like hot shoot, and you can see right through it. And you learn to tell immediately, because of little things, like accessories and attitude. People with money never show off the things that prove it, like wallets, watches, jewelry, and purses. If they don't have money, they have one glaringly expensive accessory, and they flaunt that shoot. Immediate red flag. People with money don't need to act, or be told, that they are important. Treads gonna try hard to make sure you notice they think they are awesome, and also skimp on the gratuity. We don't get anything that scream pretending to be upper class in Australia at the moment. Thanks to our mining sector, at the height of the boom, someone could leave high school, get some tickets, and pretty much walk into a six-figure job on the mines. So the young man driving around in an expensive muscle car, while covered in tattoos, slabs of beer in the back, may not be pretending, but could be a cub cashed up boggan. 20 dudes who pulled their money to pay for one bottle service table at a Vegas club. Source was one of those dudes. McMansions without curtains or furniture in the upstairs. Shopping in the curtains aisle of Walmart and openly declaring to me an employee trying to zone that we have no taste. In. In. I used to be concerned about how I looked slash dressed when going to a high end retailer. Now I simply don't care. If they won't serve me when wearing jeans then I'll just go somewhere else. We took the wheels off our double wide and bought plastic paneling that looks like bricks. When every item of clothing you're wearing has a design logo on it, real rich people don't walk around looking like billboards. 
when people act all rich, but they've never even staged a South American coup for better tax rates on their fruit plantations. Getting married in a big fat wedding by taking out loans, borrowing from friends, plus getting super expensive rings when you can't afford one tenth of it. One of my husband's best friends comes from a filthy rich family think, billions. We went to his wedding a few years ago, and the social experiment that ensued was beyond fascinating. The guests themselves were a mix of anyone from broke college kids ass to doctors, to millionaires and billionaires. Some trends definitely emerged amongst the people who were obviously self-conscious about their wealth though. They were frequently dismissive and sometimes downright rude to the serving staff. They made sure logos of their belongings were plainly in sight your hotel room is literally connected to the reception venue, so I know you didn't need to bring your $1200 Canada Goose Parker to dinner. They also made sure to talk loudly about their expensive plans for the future, and highlighting any wealth related attributes in the process oh well, my girlfriend is graduating medical school next year, so we're starting to look at houses, mostly in the 800k 1 mil range. It was a stark contrast against the people who were comfortable with their social status wealthy or otherwise who were all just happy to be there, having fun, drinking alcohol and wholly unworried about which stranger they'll never meet again knows how much money they wish you they had. Edit is complaining about how expensive homes are in big cities in Australia a thing. Like, we all know decent housing is expensive in big cities across the globe, right? We also all know that the vast majority of new college grads cannot afford a million dollar home right off the bat, right? Constantly altering your pink channel suit to fit in at a country club. My uncle and his wife are perfect examples. They bought a brand new Mercedes that they can't afford, live in a house that's too big for them, bought a caravan in a park where the ground rental is nearly 50k a year, they bought their kids expensive as bikes that were never used and what did they use to pay for all this, if you guess credit cards then you are correct, credit cards and loans from my grandmother, which they will never pay back, then they make fun of my mother and I for being working class. Might as well spit on my grandfather's grave, since he was working class through and through. Edit, I got the cost of the caravan rental wrong by 10k. It's 5k for the ground rental, and they rent the caravan from the site for 35k. So the total is 40k. This was my bad, and my grandmother actually cleared this up for me. Edit 2, as someone pointed out this number is apparently sus. I'm just going off what I was told. Pronouncing your name bouquet. Obligatory edit. Thank you mysterious benefactors. When you get invited for supper and bring a bottle of wine, but feel obligated to mention it cost $35. Definitely buying cars you can't afford. I'm solidly middle class and drive a Ford Focus don't buy one. Fear shoot and a lot of people I work with that make less than I do roll in driving big expensive trucks or Mercedes cars. If I can't afford that, I know they can't. Moving to LA despite not being able to afford living there. Buying expensive clothes or fake ones, and owning a high-end phone, but you stretch your budget to do this in order to make it seem like you can afford excess when you really can't. Posting pictures of your fancy cars and house renovations, shoes, etc on social media. Real rich people don't actually have to scream I'm rich to be rich. R Simply talking about money and how much things cost as way to brag and show others your wealth. I grew up fairly close to my cousin has 6 months older than me and his family and they are what I consider to be truly wealthy. My uncle is slash was a very well respected dentist who built his practice up from nothing over a 30 year period he retired in the last 5 years. My uncle grew up in a dirt poor farming family and never flaunted his wealth. When he became wealthy, he didn't buy a new sports car every year he still drives the same sports car he bought 15 years ago. He didn't wear flashy designer clothes he still wears expensive clothes though. And yeah I'd never know he was a millionaire if you passed him in the street. He owns properties all over the province for hunting and net worth reasons, owns a mansion in the Bahamas on the beach, and takes trips to Europe yearly. You wouldn't know any of those things unless you knew him on a personal level. On the other side of my family I have an uncle that would be considered upper middle class. 
he always had to have the fanciest toys, the newest models, etc and everything was slash is a competition to him. My parents bought a new Cadillac before they retire, and of course he had to purchase one as well, except it had to be better, so he bought a CTSV within a month of my parents, so he could be better than my parents. He also has to brag about his traveling, telling us of the fun he had in Vegas last week, the exciting trip to Mexico has taking next and so on. In my experience there's two types of wealthy. There is the truly wealthy class who are humble people, that make smart decisions with their money and don't treat it like a competition. And there is the forks wealthy class who have to try and flaunt their wealth in the face of others as a way of keeping score, and ensuring that they are perceived as winning. Oh. Actual upper class story, have a wine snob friend coming over for a party. So I bought the a cheap obscure wine like $10 bottle, and when I cashed out I asked them to take the sticker gun, and put $80 on it. My friend thought it was an amazing bottle of wine. When I sold cars for 5 years the people with the worst credit slash income slash finances were always trying to stretch to buy the most expensive and newest car. They were the easiest to impress with new features, special colors and performance specifications. The people with the best finances were always looking for a basic Corolla or Camry. They were usually replacing a 15 year old Toyota they handed down or sold online. After having that experience, whenever I hear someone say they special ordered a special color or that there's only X amount of this car made I just think to myself that they are a sucker and probably have bad credit. And when I see someone driving an old beat up car I don't automatically think they are broke. But instead I think they are probably hoarding cash and have a nice retirement ahead of them. Putting other people down for having less expensive things than they do. Like just because it's not expensive means that it is worthless. Those people need to shut up. Knock a luxury brand anything. Usually watches, bags, wallets, clothes. There are plenty of respectable elegant things that look and work just as well. You're not tricking us, and you're not tricking them the people who swim in those lanes all the time. My ex comes from a really... Well kinda fricked up family. Her dad is a multimillionaire who cheated on her mom and wound up leaving, and was by all accounts not a great husband, father, or man. But after he left, my ex's mom became a professional alimony hound. She never got a high school diploma, and worked part time as a hairdresser, but was a single mom in a house, that must have been work a million plus. It was clear, based on the way she spoke, that she was living paycheck to paycheck on gross child support and alimony checks, funding a lifestyle that would disappear completely, if something happened to her ex-husband. Her home is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen multiple formal dining rooms, mismatched hardwood furniture everywhere, for some reason every TV is hidden in a closed closet, etc. But the weirdest thing, the weirdest freaking thing, is that there are no clocks in the house. 25 mirrors, there's not a spot in the home where you can't find your reflection, but you never know what time it is. I'm not sure if that's a direct answer to the question, but I thought it was related. Buying an inflatable hot tub while living in a trailer park. South just bought an inflatable hot tub and live in a trailer park. My boyfriend tried to convince me that if I bought a KitchenAid that we'd need to leave it on the counter so people would notice that we could afford to spend $250 on a kitchen appliance. I would love to have one but I don't bake enough to justify it and if I ever get one it's going to be stored when I'm not using it because I hate clutter on my counters. Edit. There seem to be a lot of comments disagreeing that $250 appliances aren't upper class. I think this is a matter of perspective. I grew up super poor. If I walked into some owns house and saw a $250 mixer, that absolutely is not a basic necessity. I would assume that their family had considerably more money than mine did. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just my observation and opinion. I think it's interesting that people seem to be scoffing at the idea that this appliance isn't even that expensive slash that big of a deal slash how. Could it be a status symbol? Having that much extra money in America is a big deal for a lot of families. Edit 2. The boyfriend isn't as materialistic as this post makes him sound I promise. He grew up poor too, and he thinks it's an art piece that should be displayed. But he also wouldn't buy one just for having it. He'd only buy it if he expected it to be used. 
Edit 3. Some really nice person who shall remain anonymous, unless they decide otherwise has given me an inside pass to Whirlpool, owner of KitchenAid. I'm now taking recommendations on which model to get, and which attachments. I cook a ton and I love learning new recipes. My aunt has a house in a really expensive area of Dublin D4. She speaks as if she was born in that posh area, however, we are from a shooty little village in the middle of nowhere in the middle of County Limerick. My uncle and father speak with a local accent. She and her children live off all the ready-made meals, while she buys expensive designer clothes that spend most of her salary. She also gets my grandfather to pay her rent. Also her children don't always have shoes that fit them, or even are a size too small. They are often tiny on them. Making sure you have the best of everything expensive car, top of the line everything, luxury vacations twice a year, while barely living paycheck to paycheck, subtly working into conversations the expense of things you own, refusing to eat at a restaurant with less than 4 stars, because those other places have trashy customers. People with everything high-end brand name Merced's car, Beats earphones, the latest iPhone, etc or while they live in a shooty two-bedroom apartment they share with their cousin for the last five years, while working a mediocre warehouse job. Conspicuous consumption. Ugly big houses, flashy things, diamonds, gold, handbags with labels, leopard print clothes, fur, branded goods, too much plastic surgery, I think it'll stop here as it's not making me feel like a nice person. According to the culture of my country, women wearing shoot ton of gold jewel risen men wearing blazer slash suits everywhere, even if the temperature is through the roof. Only talk about money and brands. I had a scholarship in one of the top notch schools in my country and you could understand who is upper class really who is faking one fake ones, you 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 this brand, you 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 that brand, my chauffeur brings us blah blah blah, we've been to a two real ones, I'm gonna take the subway and I need to work to this to that, let's go camping, like I did not know one of my friends were rich, until he invited me to his family's boat, they are really are upper class and they use money as a gear not a purpose. Anything Supreme. It's crazy. Supreme marked bricks are selling for $1000 on eBay. There's a kid at my school hossa walking Supreme advertisement so much of the stuff has wearing is branded, and is always bragging about how rich he is. Has not, he just cares enough about looking like it, that has willing to spend money he doesn't have. It's kinda sad tbh. So my husband and I grew up in the same area with dads who made about the same amount of money middle class, and stay at home moms. But our upbringings were very different. My husband's parents were terrible with money. They tried to look up a middle class. They made poor financial decisions trying. Like refinancing their homes, and using the money to buy new TVs, and go on vacations they couldn't afford. Eating out multiple times a week. Never buying generic anything. Always shopping at Nordstrom and Masses. As a result they are now penniless, and living in the same home they bought in the 80s. Like, it's exactly the same, as when they bought it. And my mill still doesn't understand how to be financially responsible. She takes cruises every year, and multiple trips to Disneyland. Meanwhile she is underwater on her home, almost 65 and has zero money put away for her retirement. On the other hand, my parents shopped second hand. Pinched every penny. Our vacations were camping trips. My mom saved money buying generic everything. Taught me how to grow our own food, patch clothes, cook meals at home instead of eating out. We had chickens, and would sell their eggs to neighbors. My mom worked as a janitor on the weekend. They didn't care about appearances. They just put their heads down and planned for their future. They did refinance their home as well, but they always put the money back into the house. Putting a new roof on it, turning the garage into a bonus room slash bedroom. Building a large shop in the backyard, bumping out the dining room. As a result the home they bought in the 80s is now beautiful and worth half a million dollars. They have investments and a large retirement. They have a lake house they spend the summer at. My dad could leave work anytime and they could live quite comfortably. Don't go broke trying to look like you errant. Look broke while saving for your future.